It's Wednesday, February 13th, and I'm your host, Paula Hersey. On Barnstable today, it's all about those shellfish, oysters, clams, and the blue economy of aquaculture innovation here in the town of Barnstable and across Cape Cod region. First up, municipal news and notes. The HYCC annual Skate for Love food drive starts this Friday, February 15th. The Hyannis Youth and Community Center will be collecting non-perishable food items downstairs in the skate rental room for the annual Skate for Love food drive. Donations will be accepted anytime during operation hours during school vacation week until February 22nd. For every item donated, participants will receive a chance to win a free public skating pass, which will be valid until February 2020. Please help us fill the local food pantries during this time of year when the need can be most critical. Spending the day out on the water, caring for a rack of oyster from seed to market is the dream of many residents. Shell Fishing 101 may be just the course you are looking for to explore the opportunities and innovation of the blue economy. A growing business in the blue economy, aquaculture. Here with me today, Abigail Archer, a marine specialist with the county, mm -hmm. and shell fishing. You have to learn how to do it if you want to get a grant. <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about what you do at the county uh, in the marine specialties. Sure. So I'm an extension agent, and so uh, I have two colleagues that I work with, Josh Weitzma and Diana Murphy. So we're all part of the marine program with Cape Cod Cooperative Extension. And basically our job is to talk to people who work in marine industries on the Cape, um, figure out what kind of challenges they're encountering, what kind of questions they have, and figure out if there's way that scientific research can aid them in that. Um, so we work really closely with the shellfish aquaculture industry. We also work closely with the shellfish departments, natural resources departments on, on each of the, the towns in Barnstable County. Right, and Barnstable, uh, the town of Barnstable, mm -hmm. has a growing aquaculture industry. Uh, yes, having across the state, aquaculture is growing. Right, definitely. so give us some of those stats that you have come up with. Yeah, so um, across the whole Commonwealth of Massachusetts, there's 1,300 acres under cultivation, so people are growing primarily oysters, but also quahogs, um, and are experimenting with some other species as well. Half of those acres are in Barnstable County, so wow. 660 acres in Barnstable County um, are under aquaculture. Um, the value of oyster landings in Massachusetts was 27 million in 2017, so that's what? the year that we have most recent data for. A little over half of that is just from Barnstable County, wow. um, so it's about 14 million. Uh, Barnstable alone, town of Barnstable alone, uh, six million dollars was brought in through oyster culture, just oysters. The value of quahogs total in the Commonwealth is uh, 28 million, and most of that is coming from Wellfleet and Barnstable. That is just mm -hmm. amazing. And when we talk about the blue economy and some of the industries that are around there, aquaculture really is a cornerstone of this economy. It employs people. So uh, in town of Barnstable, you've got 52 growers, but those are just the people whose names are listed on the grant. They then employ other people. They also buy seed from businesses. They also buy equipment. Um, they have to buy gas. They have to maintain their trucks. So you, know, you can add an economic multiplier to that. And there's, there's uh, much more of an effect that the industry has beyond just the people bringing in shellfish. Uh, uh -huh. Barnstable County, the total, there's uh, 270 growers. 270 mm -hmm. growers over the, mm -hmm. oh, that's just, uh, it's, it's mind boggling awesome. to think of that because when you go out to the, the flats in Barnstable, if you're out there pleasure boating, you don't always see them because it's, you know, low tide is when you'll see them and they're, yeah. they're further out in the harbor. But when you're out there and you see it's just acres and acres of, of vessels that these seed and these uh, oysters are growing in. And one of the coolest parts about going out there, I think, any town you know, where, where there's a, um, a group of shellfish uh, aquaculture grants, people do things a little bit differently. There's a lot of experimentation. Everyone puts their own little spin on it, tries things, finds you know, the most... The, the way that works best for their business plan, the most efficient way for them to work. Right. And we have, obviously, grants here in the town of Barnstable. Mm -hmm. um, we have people who transfer grants. Mm -hmm. It doesn't necessarily mean as the grant holder you can go to the Shell Fishing 101, which I just love the, the name of this. <laughs> You're going to learn how to be an uh, aquaculturalist here in the town of Barnstable mm -hmm. or in the county. Yep. But you also have uh, the ability that you can work on this and not own a grant. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, there are a lot of people who work on a shellfish grant who don't necessarily have their name on the lease. Um, right. 
So yeah, it's, it's a lot of labor, it's a lot of work. So you need a lot of people to sort those shellfish and bag them up and transport them back to the landing. Uh, do all the paperwork for all of that as well. Okay. Um, so yeah, the county, one of the things we do is offer um, workshops and classes for um, you know, topics that people are interested in. The Master Gardener program is mm -hmm. run through a cooperative extension. Um, but we, the marine program, we offer a Fundamentals of Shellfish Farming class. Um, okay. So it's uh, eight weeks long. It's on Thursday nights from six to eight this year. Okay. Um, and we've got, we cover a range of topics. and. So people who are interested in getting into the shellfish farming industry, are um, in the class is designed for them, right. um, either who want to get their own grant or who want to work on a grant. But also we have a number of people from the community every year who just want to learn more about what their neighbors do. Um, they might work for a nonprofit organization, they just want to learn more about the industry. Um, so th those folks are welcome in the class as well. So let's talk a little bit about the eight weeks. So mm -hmm. uh, obviously I'm sure the first week is orientation and yes. you know, <laughs> why are you here kind of uh, class. Yes, and right, and so there's an opportunity for all the class um, participants to learn from each other. So we definitely have a who are you, why are you here section of that, right. that introduction. Um, yeah, and the basics will go over um, aquaculture in a, a world context, you know, what are the species being raised land-based aquaculture versus um, water, marine-based aquaculture, which is mostly what happens on the Cape. Right. Um, yeah, and then we'll figure out what questions people have. What do they want to learn about? What are their goals from the class? So we make sure we're you know, hitting all the subjects that, that right. they feel like they need to be successful. Um, and then the next uh, class after that will be understanding seed supply and shellfish nursery culture. And that's a big one, and that's it actually is. another, I hate to keep using the word, growing <laughs> industry is the seed specifically. Yeah. Um, ARC, the hatchery is, uh, you know, world renowned now uh, with, with their work. Yeah, yeah, so we've got the ARC hatchery is the one, um, you know, closest to us. There's a couple of other hatcheries in the area. Um, farmers will also sometimes get their seed from a hatchery in Maine. There's one in Long Island. Um, yeah, so it's a big part of the business. You need right. to figure out plan ahead, you know, how right. many seed are you going to buy? How much space do you have to grow them out? How much time is it going to take to actually grow them up to big shellfish that you can then market? Right. Um, but it all starts with figuring out, okay, how many, how much seed are you going to order this year? Right, mm -hmm. and then what I thought was one of the things that I learned when we did a video um, on this particular subject was there's all sorts of vessels. So do you go over yeah. like how, where these seed go mm -hmm. and, and how they don't float away? <laughs> we will. It, I know it is an amazing industry all in itself um, and just visually stunning when you go to visit the hatchery. So right. there's going to be a field trip to um, Aquaculture Research Corporation, okay. the ARC hatchery in Dennis. Um, and so, yes, Lisa Barasa, uh, one of the staff members there, will give us a tour and show us right. how she grows all the um, algae to then feed the little shellfish to right. help them grow big and strong so they can then grow out in people's grants. Right. And then when you get out into the grants, I, I'm sure this is another class too that you'll have is everybody has their own way. Some are using the big mm -hmm. crates and some are using other types of vessels. Everybody thinks they have the, the secret sauce, mm -hmm. right? So, right, there, there's so much innovation in this industry. So, um, uh, we used to run a mini grant program. So, we get funding through the state to then make available to farmers to propose an idea and try it out. So, it was a way to sort of subsidize some of the risk of trying out a new idea. Mm -hmm. And so, a lot of ideas that came through that, that mini grant program in the early 90s, early 2000s are now just like accepted practices today. So, it's really gratifying to go out there and see things that were experiments right. being actively part of someone's business now. So yeah, but there's a, um, a class on, we'll split it up into oyster farming and then quahog farming. Okay. So for the oyster farming, we'll go over all the different methods. So you can grow oysters just on the bottom with no gear. Um, you can put them in cages. You can put them in racks and bags. There's even um, floating gear. There's hanging gear that actually uses the uh, motion of the waves to rock the oysters back and forth and um, chip <laughs> off the ends. And so they grow with that, that nice deep top. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there, there's a lot of different ways to do it. And so part of the class will be to, you know, expose people to those different ways. Um, and, and we'll have guests. Hug. Yeah, and then, oh uh, yeah, quahog growing too. So a lot of the industry started right. off on the Cape is growing quahogs, and then right. people got into oysters. And now 94% of the shellfish aquaculture industry in Massachusetts is oysters grown for the half shell industry. Um, so it's almost a monoculture. Um, but the people who are growing quahogs are getting decent prices for them now because they're 
there's right. there's a demand for them and not as many growers as there used to be. So and so many guest speakers too. Yes. Oh my goodness. We yeah. And the the speakers who come in are sometimes people who took the class you know way back. Um, people who are you know they're excited about the industry and they're happy to to share the things that they've learned and you know give people a leg up so they're not making the same mistakes. Right. Um, We've heard too um, you know there's always this concern of uh, safety uh, mm -hmm, in yeah. this industry. Yeah. So do you cover in a class the safe handling of shellfish and, yep. and you know what you're looking for what you're supposed to do in some of these instances yeah so um, we haven't confirmed all our speakers on that day yet but what we've done in the past is yeah we have a whole class focused on safety both you know personal safety and then safe handling of shellfish right. um, so yeah we'll go over all of the um, the regulations regarding vibrio control um, so time to temperature making sure that your shellfish um, get on ice within the appropriate amount of time um, all the paperwork that needs to be filled out so the, the shellfish can be traced back. Um, but and then also how to keep yourself safe when you're out in the water. So in the past we've had um, an environmental police officer come and talk about safety on the water, um, how to keep yourself safe, how to keep your employees safe. Um, so. That's fantastic. And I know our natural resource officers are out there, you know, making sure that our folks out mm. in the harbor are yes. doing, you know, the things that they need to do to make sure that the food is safe as well as uh, yes. they're safe on the water. Mm -hmm. One of the classes that really struck me is the business side of this so yeah. this is a real business oh, yeah. you have to go to market with it you need a marketing plan you need mm -hmm. all of the things that a traditional business would do but with a twist of lemon yeah so <laughs> tell us a little bit about that that class yep um so we uh my colleague josh reitzma has prepared some enterprise budgets we actually have a um uh uh, like an example budget, I think it's called Biff's Shellfish Farm. <laughs> and so <laughs> we actually plan out, like, okay, if you're, getting, you know, what, what's a three-year plan? You know, how are you going to obtain your seed? Um, how many years do you have to sort of carry, you know, the investment that you put in it before you actually make a profit back? Um, yeah, that that is the most like real part of the class. We re really want to let people know what what the expectations are for when they'll actually be able to make a profit um, and how much right. investment is required up front. But there's a lot of help on the Cape. Um, so uh, we've brought in folks from SCORE Business Consulting um, and then also the um, Lower Cape, um, or Cape. Uh, community, community Development. Thank you, Community <laughs> Development Corporation. I knew yeah. exactly what yeah. you were talking about. <laughs> um, so yeah, they provide help with business planning. So we'll, we'll let people know about what, what resources are available in the community as well. All right. And who goes to this class mm -hmm. again? So we've, so we've been offering this class since 2008, and we usually offer it every other year. This year, there was so much interest. This would have been an off year, but there were so many people who wanted to participate, we decided to run it. But we've had 160 students since, since 2008, um, and they come from all of the Cape Cod towns, but then also from um, Plymouth, you know, Plymouth County towns, a lot mm -hmm. from Plymouth, because they have a lot of acreage yeah. um, that's under cultivation. A lot of the Buzzards Bay communities as well. Um, and it runs the gamut. There are people who um, you know, want to be involved in the industry and who have now gone on to successfully right. get grants themselves or, or you know, work with partners. Um, and it's so much fun to see those people yeah. out on the flats. Uh, but yeah, then the people who um, they are just curious. I mean, we had one woman come last year who just she wanted to learn more about what their neighbors did because they saw the equipment out there, but they didn't really know. So That's so interesting. <laughs> yeah. uh, when does the class start and how do people get into this class. So class starts March 21st. Okay. It'll run eight weeks between March 21st and May 9th. So it'll be on Thursday nights. Um, to sign up, we do. you can go to the Cape Cod Cooperative Extension website and the information is there under workshops. Um, but uh, we still do things a little old school at the county, so we actually have a form that one needs to fill out by hand um, right. and then mail in a check. Um, the class costs $150 um, per person. Um, and then you mail in a check or deliver it by hand to the Cooperative Extension Office. Is there a uh, limited seating in this um, class? Yeah, it's, so it's going to be in the Harborview Room of okay. Barnstable County, so there, there's only so many people that can fit in there. Um, the maximum, we need at least 15 people to run the class. I, that's not going to be a problem. Um, and then 40 people is the maximum. Um, so it is first come, first serve. What do you want folks in the town of Barnstable mm. to know about this industry and where it's going? Yeah. There is a lot of room for innovation, and even though it's mostly dominated by oysters right now, 
Um, there's possibilities for growing other species that we're looking into. So um, surf clams, you know, the big clams, but if you grow them small, they can get marketed as butter clams. Um, so we're doing a bunch of research right now with farmers to test out growing methods for that. Also blood arcs or blood clams um, is another uh. species. Turns out that there's quite a market for those and most of them come from the wild fishery. Um, and so there's opportunity to figure out some culture techniques for that too. So it's aquaculture is growing. You know, it's, it's, it's grown in the state tremendously, especially from the 1980s, 90s, 2000s. Um, but there's, there's lots of room to keep innovating. Here's to innovation <laughs> in the blue economy. <laughs> yes. Thank you so much, Abigail. Thank you very much for inviting me. The aquaculture industry is a growing industry here in the town of Barnstable, Cape Cod, and the Commonwealth. Oysters and other shellfish are important partners in our water quality, economy, and way of life. A collaborative short documentary with Channel 18 and the Cape Cod Media Center, Movers and Shuckers, recently was awarded first place in the Mass Access Creator Awards in Boston. Channel 18 assistant station manager Paula Hersey was a co-producer cinematographer and sound engineer for the production, which features the town of Barnstable's shellfish grants and farmers. It was produced as an educational short segment for the Mid-Cape's first ever Oyster Fest, Shuck, at Cape Cod Beer last October. A special thank you to Natural Resource Officer Devin Harrington for the boat ride and introduction to the shellfish farmers of Barnstable. It's fulfilling. I kind of have a little bit of a parental instinct towards these, I mean, People have a tendency to look at oysters and not see them as animals, and, but that's what they are. They're, they're animals and it's very, very fulfilling to take something from uh, a baby and be able to tend to it, to, uh, to nurture it and to give it the best environment it possibly can and over the course of years see it grow and see it do well. Yes, it's hard work, but there's just so many intrinsic benefits that come with it. I mean, look at the location we're in right now. I mean, this is, who wouldn't want to work out here? What happens is you buy seed from a hatchery, and a hatchery is a completely other part of the industry where a facility will basically start an oyster from spat and grow it into what you see as a product. So what you do is you basically take that small product and you put it into a vessel that contains them to the point where they don't blow away because they're, they're light like a snowflake when they're real young and they're just like susceptible to like being taken away in the current. So you keep them in a vessel. Uh, there's all different types of uh, you know, gear that people use, but basically from that point you grow it until it gets to be of a size that it can fend for itself and then they go into trays. And from the point that they're in trays, they get larger to where they're two and a half inches to three inches in size for product to pick up. And then you try to get them out the door and sell them. Support it. It really does a lot of good, both for the economy and for the environment. I mean, the Cape is famous for its seafood and stuff. But when you go to a restaurant, ask where your oysters are coming from. Are they coming from another state or are they supporting your neighbor, the farmer down the street who is out here growing his product. I mean, I, I think we've seen exactly what happens when the, the fishing industry goes away. We were, were known for cod at one time and now there's the cod fishery has been completely decimated. And using our hatchery and having these local farmers, we have a have an industry on Cape Cod that, that's year-round and has great jobs for uh, people who want to have a family here on Cape Cod. Over 80% of the seed that's needed on Cape Cod comes from ARC Hatchery, and that's not just for the, the farmers, that is also for the towns that are using the seed to support the wild and recreational harvest. So what we're doing at ARC is we're basically taking the life cycle of an oyster and kind of flipping it upside down, more or less. So an oyster typically spawns in July and August, and we begin spawning in 
February, and that way we can have our seed to the oyster farmer in time for that good growing season of the year. So we'll give them a baby oyster that's say the size of a quarter in May, and on average a year and a half from then they'll be ready for market. Um, and that helps us to, to get the animals on the farms when algae is most abundant in our water. 55% of the state's oysters are grown here on Cape Cod. Uh, that was worth $14.9 million last year in 2017. And when you factor in all of the, the shoreside support, so buying equipment, buying seed, and then where the oyster goes in terms of selling it at a raw bar, um, that's worth over $30 million to the Cape Cod economy. Shellfish, and oysters in particular, are amazing at helping to clean our waters. An oyster can pump 50 gallons of water a day. The water comes into the oyster and anything that's in the water, algae in particular, stays with the oyster and the clean water leaves the oyster. And that algae is using all of the nitrogen that we are so worried about being in our estuaries. So once you harvest those oysters, you've taken the nitrogen out of the system. The problem we're experiencing in uh, Cape Cod is an excess nitrogen loading of our waters and that comes from uh, septic systems, golf courses, lawn fertilizers. That increased nitrogen load creates an abundance of algae which creates a phenomenon called eutrophication which is a clouding of the upper stratum of the water table. It prevents light from getting through the water. With an oyster, microalgae is their food. Natural populations of shellfish are at 1% of historic level, so it's important to re-establish those populations uh, to help combat this excess algae. A lot of towns on the Cape are looking to use oysters to help solve their water quality problems. They do more than just clean our water. Oysters also help stabilize shorelines. So there's a lot of projects going on um, to restore oyster reefs. We also have products that help to restore the natural population, and it's specifically called, it's called remote set. So we're taking recycled sea clam shell or oyster shell, and we're convincing the oysters to attach to that shell, and then putting that in critical areas where we're trying to reestablish oyster reefs. And we've seen great results in many different sites, but specifically Mashpee, where they've uh, completely stopped fish kills in some of their embayments. I don't think oysters are the solution. The oysters are a good way to get from today to a point where we have clean water coming out of our, all of our wastewater. The primary thing in, in, uh, in selling shellfish is to get people to try it. People develop tastes for shellfish very similar to how they develop tastes for wine. You have to start somewhere and then they uh, sample other, other shellfish that are grown in, in different uh, environments, um, different waters, they develop different tastes. Some are saltier, some have a more briny, earthier taste, and everybody's a little different. Oysters are very much like wine grapes, where they're all the same species but they're based on the conditions in which they're growing. So whether it's the water quality, the algae that they're eating, the amount of fresh water, the gear they're being grown in, that dictates the different tastes of all the oysters. Every, every oyster need, should have a, a nice deep cup, um, a flat top. The deep cup is, is, means it's, it's meaty and uh, it's got you know, a lot of brine in it. Uh, you want to avoid anything that looks dry. One of the best ways to get recipes for eating oysters is when you're out on the flats harvesting to talk to the people around you because everybody loves to share their favorite recipe and everybody has a special ingredient that they put into their Rockefeller or their um, fried oysters or whatever they're eating. Everybody has a special way that they love to make them. I just personally do like them on the half shell, maybe just cold, maybe a tiny bit of lemon and a beer. I think that's the best way to eat an oyster.
a look at things to do, places to go, and people to meet. Join students and faculty for a free gallery opening featuring Barnstable's Fine Arts 3 class followed by a Barnstable Music Department Jazz Showcase on February 14th at 5 p.m. Celebrate Valentine's Day surrounded by beautiful art, music, desserts, and chocolate. Barnstable High School Night Auditorium. Comments, suggestions, accolades, connect with us on Facebook and Instagram. Email us or send us an old-fashioned note by Carrier Pigeon. Channel 18 works for you. I'm Paula Hersey, and thank you for watching Barnstable today. Thank you.